So this is my Torquay United versus FC Halifax Town match preview. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you do enjoy the video. So Torquay United, very, very, very unfortunate not to be playing in the EFL this season. Losing to Hartlepool in the playoff final on penalties and it was down to two controversial decisions at the end of the day. I would suggest going to watch that game. But they are finding it hard this season uh, in the Van Rama National League. Like I expected to be honest, they lost to all the shot during midweek 1-0 and they lost to Barney uh, on Saturday. Which isn't too good for their standards. And I, can, I could have sort of seen this coming with obviously losing the likes of Kyle Cameron to Notts County. Ben Whitfield's gone to Stockport and Fraser Hall who's obviously a clinical goal scorer uh, leaving them in the summer uh, you can sort of see it, it is hard for sides when you're losing your best players and I think and I think Gary Johnson's side has had it has found it hard to adapt this season uh, obviously with a lot of sides spending a lot of money and they've struggled obviously to keep hold of them key players for them so they will be hoping for a good result um, on Saturday against us I think they will be wanting at least a point but I think initially they will be trying to get all three points against us so FC Halifax Town, that eight unbeaten run did come to an end on Tuesday night. Uh, in my opinion, a very unfortunate uh, loss. I think we deserved at least a point against Wrexham. Uh, but if you don't take your chances, that's what's hap what happened. And obviously, Paul Mullin did score that last minute goal uh, to give Wrexham all uh, three points, which isn't too good for our standards. But I think the important thing now is to bounce back. We've, we've had some very, very, very good results recently. Obviously, previously beating Dover away, which is far down south. And I know Dover are doing too well this season. And the point deduction hasn't helped them. But to still take three points there, it's, it's a good result. Oh, obviously, we've, beat, we've beaten the likes of Stockport. That Notts County match was just mad. Uh, we've gone to Bromley, got a point against Bromley, who were in, in very, very good form at the time. Uh, and I think we just need to keep these uh, results going. And I think Torquay... It's not going to be an easy place to go, to be totally honest. Um, last season, obviously, we won 3-2 uh, three, three, there, with Jeff King scoring the win after giving two penalties away. Uh, but it is going to be a very, very, very tough um, game against uh, Torquay. And I think as long as we've got one at A game, and if we can play like we did against Wrexham, I'm sure we can get all three points against uh, Torquay uh, this Saturday. Let's look at the past 11 meetings between Torquay United and FC Halifax Town. So, Torquay have won seven of them. Uh, we've drawn two and we've won two. Obviously, one of them wins was that emphatic 3-2 victory uh, against Torquay where Jeff King uh, scored, scored the winner uh, late on after giving two penalties away. We were trailing 2-1 at one point. But looking at the record here, we don't have a, a particularly very good record against Torquay. Uh, the only win away from home, uh, the only two wins away from home was last season's and um, obviously back in 2020 when uh, Josh Staunton and Toby Shaw Silver scored for the Shearmen. Apart from that, the record isn't too good, uh, which is quite fascinating and quite, um, you know, you wouldn't expect. Uh, we've got a better record against Torquay away from home than, we're what, what, than what we have at home. Uh, I'm still quite uh, tense going into this game. I think it's going to be a very tight game and obviously the record suggests that Torquay are going to win. But looking into league positions this season, we, we've got, we're probably favourites just uh, after us. Obviously, we're fifth and they're 17th. But Torquay will be wanting to bounce back, like I previously said, after losing to Barnet and Ulster shot. Two games that, for their standards, they would probably want to win. So, Torquay United, obviously, they've lost a lot of big names in the summer. But one player that's been there for quite a while since 2019 that has really stepped up this season is Amari Little. He really has come under the radar, only scoring once in the previous season. This season, he's scored eight goals so far in 14 appearances, uh, which is pretty impressive. And, obviously, wears that number 10 shirt. An attacking midfielder. Uh, I think we do need to be wary of him. Uh, I'm sure the Sherman uh, can, you know, defend against him uh, pretty well. But, you know, he's, he's a danger man for them at the end of the day. And I think he's the one that we do need to watch out for if there's any danger man for Torquay United. Let's talk a little about Billy Waters, sh shan't we, uh, Torquay fans? Uh, obviously, he joined the Sherman in the summer from Torquay. Obviously, he missed that penalty in the final. Uh, it wasn't too poor for Torquay last season. I'm quite surprised that we managed to get hold of him. He scored six goals in 11 starts in a total 28 appearances. 
uh, which is quite impressive for me. Uh, a lot of talking fans said, yeah, good, decent player. Always put 110% in, but couldn't finish. This season, he's played 16 games, 16 starts, and 11 goals. So uh, that sort of uh, tells you the story, Torquay. Uh, he has been, he is a goal scorer and he's been very impressive this season. Uh, what's funny is I even saw a Torquay fan uh, put on a forum, uh, please save all your goals for the Wrexham game because we do not want you scoring uh, against Torquay on Saturday. Thank you. Now, I'm hoping he has saved his goals after he didn't score against Wrexham and he's going to get a hatful um, against uh, Torquay. But a goal will be fine as long as we can get all three points against Torquay. Just to let you know, Torquay fans, he's a threat to you. And I think when he does score a hat-trick, which hopefully he will, uh, you will be wishing that you did keep hold of him. I predict that Torquay will keep most of the ball. Although they are quite low down in the league, that is because they've linked a lot of goals against you know the weaker sides in the division, not being able to finish them off. They've got a lot of good points against the sides like Wrexham, Chesterfield, Notts County. And that's because, obviously, they've caught them on the break, obviously, in them sort of games. But they are at home, so I would suggest that they keep a lot of the ball, which means it is a, it's going to be a counter-attacking display for the Shearmen. Which means I would probably start Allen if he's fit. I do not know, to be totally honest. I think Jordan Slew needs to play well. Warburton, these sort of players, as long as they play well, I'm sure we can, you know, play well and hopefully you know, get three points. But Torquay, I think they will keep most of the ball. I predict that they will try to isolate uh, Billy Waters from the game. They may even put two men on him because he has been a threat this season and they do know a lot about him, which mean, which will mean he's going to be isolated in the first half at least, which means players like Jamie Allen, Jordan Slew, they need to fly through that. And in the second half, hopefully it opens up a little bit and that's when Billy Waters does get the space, uh, you know, to do his thing. Uh, so it's, I, I think the Sherman do need to play on the break and be very good defensively. It's a long way to go, Torquay. So hopefully we can try and get all three points. Score predictions. 1-0 Sherman, of course, with Billy Waters to score. Who else? Let us know in the comments your score predictions. Um, any fans, Torquay fans, Halifax fans, give us your thoughts on the games. Torquay fans, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on Billy Waters making the return to Torquay. Uh, yeah, and I'm very looking forward to this game, and hopefully SC Halifax Town can take quite a few down there. I'd expect over 100 to go, because if Altrincham can do it, I'm sure we can do it. It's a Hollywood resort, holiday resort at the end of the day, and it's a good thing to uh, do on your weekend. Sadly, I can't make it, so hopefully I can listen on the radio, and the Shamer can bring back all three points. Up the Shamer!